Very well. Let this abomination unto the Lord begin. Hello. 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 All right, it's big enough. And Electric Sports Bra. <laughs> and welcome back. Now, welcome to the Planet Express Delivery Podcast. Not welcome back. Welcome. We're starting this now. Good good news. Good news, everyone. How could you think that was a store? <laughs> no! Three times already! <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> no! No one help him! <laughs> Electric tie rack, it's so nice. Move your ties from side to side. Electric tie rack, baby loves it. Move, racking up electric ties. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this can't be the whole show, all right? Oh, Dave, God, bring us into the... All right, all right. As I said, welcome to the Planet Express Delivery Podcast. As you said, when did you ever say that? Two weeks ago? Always. Two weeks ago. Uh, it was two weeks ago, yeah. 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 I mean, that's not inaccurate, but we're back for another episode. I just tried to Let's... say welcome back, and you chastised me. No more talking for I'm you. I'm mad. I'm okay. <laughs> At least, think... get him under control. <laughs> I think when you say welcome back, it assumes repeat listeners, which may be a mistake. That's <laughs> very fair. Oh, yeah. No, there's not a single person who listened to the last episode that is going to listen to this episode. I like your thought There process. are no repeat listeners. We've just been cycling through a different 40 people every week since we've started this show. Or it's the same 40 drunk people who just keep forgetting they've listened to this. I don't know. I think it's funnier if just, like, every week, like, 40 people find the show and decide, yeah, not for me. Yeah, no, nah, pass. I don't, I, I, I don't... I don't think you should underestimate uh, people who need something to fall asleep to. <laughs> yes. So wait, there are people who fall asleep to the soothing sounds of the Plan X podcast? Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, everybody, you trying to go to sleep right now! No, they don't fall asleep to that. I'm sorry. Uh, we should make mention that we're recording hey, outside Mrs. today. Hey, Julia Child, so I hope you have a good dream tonight. <laughs> they do fall asleep to that. <laughs> I, I have an audiobook of her reading Goodnight Moon. It's <laughs> the most soothing. Good night, moon. Moon. Good, good night, moon. Good moon. night, spatchcocked chicken. <laughs> good night to butter. <laughs> good night, Chewbacca. To butter. <laughs> to butter. Oh. Good night. I'm just a big Star Wars Jeez. fan. I just, hear, I just hear it and everything. So. Oh, my, is, my bad. Also, how is Goodnight Chewbacca not a book already? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Somebody <laughs> fucking copyright that right trademark. now. Trademark. Yeah. Goodnight Chewbacca trademark. Patent pending. <laughs> yeah. Writing that book tomorrow. Oh no, we're getting sued by Star. Oh, uh, Disney. Shit. <laughs> no, fuck you, Eisner. <laughs> They're uh, not litigious. <laughs> so if it's not. Uh, transparently aware we are uh, drunk as we are recording this. Yeah, somewhat. Also, is this, is we're this, outside. Is this going to be one of those alpha episodes that we have to re-record? No, this isn't going to be. I, I wouldn't think so. Okay. I think we're set. But well, it's we, holiday spectacular. This is not an important episode, really. True. But it is because it is the last episode of this season. Fair. Based, based upon what... Do you know, because I'm actually curious, like, is this the, what is this, the broadcast season finale? Or? Uh, yeah, like, the bro it's the broadcast season, because this is still technically going by production numbers, uh, season six. <laughs> I realize what just happened. <laughs> I thought you were going to puke. <laughs> you guys, I'm not that drunk. They're Miller lights. <laughs> you say that now. Miller, for when you need to do a podcast. I'm pretty sure we were drinking Miller Lights on the alpha of that one podcast. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of other stuff in our systems at that point, too. Mm -hmm. Alright, real quick, before we get too far gone, um, welcome our guest, Justin Hi. Arajo from Fennec Design. Thank you for coming back. Also my neighbor. Uh-huh. Also, one of three members of... 
seminal punk band, The Morks. Correct. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you guys want to hear something kind of? It has to do with you guys, The Morks. I saw a gentleman today at the Le Moyne Farmer's Market who had a Mork the Orc shirt on. Had Mork on it. I've been wondering about what our, like, shirts or, like, CD cover might be. Like, what would we use? I mean, the Mork from Futurama? Like, that seems just, like, blatant. It's like, two on the nose. Yeah, yeah. It can't be. I mean, yeah. Well, I, what's wrong with that? I mean... I don't know. I don't know how to, like... Well, I'm assuming our album title is Goodnight Chewbacca. <laughs> so it's probably going to be something Star Wars. <laughs> It'll... <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to have such a great merch opportunity because we're going to package my book that I'm writing tomorrow <laughs> titled Goodbye Chewbacca. Good, good night, good, Chewbacca. Goodbye, Chewbacca. <laughs> I'm writing a companion piece, Goodbye, Chewbacca. Yeah, yeah okay. All right. It'll be in the New Yorker. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. I don't know how you would um, uh, translate whatever it is that we that our our image and our goofiness is to just like the debilitating loneliness of the song. Yeah, because your friends are not goofy. No, they're that's true. They're very sad. Uh, with the name like the Morks and how you're going to package yourself, people might take it as goofy. They might be like, oh, this is funny. Wait, did you actually hear the lyrics? <laughs> like, yeah. Still funny. <laughs> We're like R.E.M. before Michael Stipe lost his hair. <laughs> you it's mean like, when he was losing his hair? No, he had a full, like, head of hair, like, back when, like... Um, I remember, yeah. It was... He had really long hair back when, like, Radio Free Europe was big and Murmur came out. He had, like, like long-ass hippie hair. But it was still, like, you could see it was receding. It was starting to go. Sure. I'm just Wait, thinking. is this an episode of... No, it's Are not. you talking R.E.M. <laughs> no, we're not, we're not is, doing that. Is this an episode of Are You Talking R.E.M. Remake? I think it is. You know, the <laughs> thing about R.E.M., they just, like... Justin, stop them now. Stop them now. I, f- I feel it. like they really, like, it now. Stop trans... Stop trans- no power in this situation. They, stop it. They went between genres. Just stop. Like, you know, they weren't stop just, it. like, I know, one band. I know, it's like, and they were, like, radio, so blah, 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 indie blah. rock. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, my God, they had, like, oh, those singles and those choruses. Oh, my God, those choruses. Oh, wait, I'll fix it. I'm not familiar. Who's R.E.M.? So, like, R.E.M., like, if you want to just, like, imagine, like, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, had a baby with Marilyn Monroe, and then oh, I can separately yeah. um, uh, Elvis had a baby with um, the late Victoria II of England. And then those babies came together and had another baby. It would be REM. I don't think I support the idea of babies having sex. That is a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm alone on this, okay. But I, I think that that sums up REM pretty well. Fair enough. Are we done with this bit now? Yes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Uh, Radio Fe- for for a Europe. good minute now. <laughs> I was Radio done. for Europe is the best REM song. No, we're done. Do you know what finished means? Fin. Yes. That's a person from Finland. What word? What is that word? Not finish. Finished. One we- who is from Sweden. <laughs> that is finish. <laughs> Actually, I don't even think that's what. It is, not. <laughs> it is absolutely not. No. <laughs> Finland. Fit, yeah, Finland. Finish. We are done with the bit. Finland is the kingdom of the fish. <laughs> we need to actually get into the episode now. Dave effectively killed that bit. Yes, I did. Good work. Thank uh, you. Mm-hmm. But this is the Futurama Holiday Spectacular. Yes. Would you like to synopsize? 
if that's not a word. Just no, say, yeah. because this is an anthology episode. There's okay. no good way to uh, anthology to synopsize to anthology synops to just like fuck it's like so. anthological brain. Isn't, like, just, I mean, maybe this works as an interest, and, uh, like, something I noticed, like, I, I always love the Simpsons Treehouse of Horror episodes, uh, because it gives them an opportunity to do all these crazy ideas that can't be sustained for more than six minutes, and it's super fun, and uh, I hadn't seen this episode before, and I was kind of expecting that, and they kind of just did the same story three different ways. Yeah, <laughs> no, like, you're right. There's a yeah, holiday, yeah. Some they've run out of something. They go and find it, and they all die. And they need to do a song about yep. a thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, the songs were very prevalent in all of the yeah. little skits. But they and they also they revisited stuff, at least in the last um, portion of the episode, like revisiting the the beehive situation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And Kwanzaa Bot showing back up. Sure. Yeah. Or in the first part where they do Christmas. Obviously, we see a lot of the. We didn't see uh, the zombie. We don't. Yeah, we don't see Mark Hamill's Hanukkah zombie. Yeah, Hanukkah at zombie. All in this. No, not at all. What were they did? Christmas, uh, Kwanzaa, and was there? There were, had to be Robonica. Yeah, they do Robonica, which is kind of this is kind of crappy. To <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they don't honestly even really do Christmas. Either because they do Xmas, it, it, it's kind of same thing. It is. I mean, if you're moving, yeah, it's the same thing. Because you got to write on the top of a cardboard box Xmas ornaments. <laughs> People do that, <laughs> and then you just well. The, I usually just throw those things out. Well, you just leave it in the basement it. for yeah, nine years. Where does the X and Xmas come from? Uh, I Christ believe. on the cross. Is that it? I believe so. Okay. Actually, tell him no. <laughs> I. I think he's right that's about it. I mean, like, David. where else would it come from? No, that's what it is. Christ on the cross. But so, like, you have... But, like, how is X an abbreviation? I have no idea, but... I No, I think it's, Michael is like, right. It's Christ right. on the cross. Like I am right. Fuck you, David. And then Look when it you up. say that, I feel like... Eric, what does the X in Xmas come from? <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> you're asking the wrong person. It's Christ right. on a cross. <laughs> it's important to know. We've just shouted at a person on the street what uh, the the X and Xmas stands for. He didn't know. <laughs> he gave like a, a sh kind of shruggish. Yeah. Really, is it really a thing? The X and Xmas. Well, yeah, Xmas. You never seen that? I mean, yeah. Bill O'Reilly rails on about it every well, fucking. Well, that's the thing. Year. And if it does mean, if it is supposed to be a cross. Then, like, what do you have to worry about? That's what I always assumed it was well, for. Why is it turned to the side? Because like... plus must... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> plus plus that would lead to, <laughs> like, a lot of, like, plus barista <laughs> confusion. Um, <laughs> plus mist? If it was plus mass, then you get into a weird quantum thing. <laughs> and if the barista is a mathematician, that might have something. <laughs> Let me tell you about your latte plus mass. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like x even... would also... <laughs> Are you calling me back? Use a mathematically minded barista who would then assume there is a random variable in the latte. <laughs> I, Justin brings up a very good point about that too. <laughs> a random variable in a latte is just like someone Did he put want a cinnamon? in there. <laughs> X equals dish soap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Oh, we should, before we get too far. Uh, mention that this podcast is brought to you by Gunderson's Unshelled Nuts. Yes. <laughs> They're not so good. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, you didn't think I was going to say something, sons? No, I just... Uh, it, well, I just... It reminds me of things that are funnier. Like, I'll just go ahead and say, on the record, on the wreck, if you will. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is, episode is weird, but th but that reminds me more of, like, so we've been trying to write sketches, me and Elisa and James, and we've been watching a lot of Mr. Show, and so when I heard that immediately, I just thought of, like, Henderson Valley Eggs, or, like, uh, Baco Mayonnaise, or, like, there's, like, enough, like, 
There's always like, Faco, man. There's man. always like interstitial sketches on Mr. Show of like um, different products and. I don't know. Like, yeah. I just feel like they did it better. Like Fairsley's grocery store. Yes. Or, yeah. yeah, Fairsley's. Yeah. Well, those interstitial things have been around. Like, the Gunderson nuts, that's an actual thing from when they used to do, like, Christmas specials. Like, they would cut to these, like, random commercials. Okay. Now, that's probably where Mr. Show got it as well. Uh, yeah. But yeah. it, well, go ahead. Because in the early days of TV, they didn't have, like, different commercials. Like, it would be, like,. Yeah, the first commercial. You know, air. Lucy would walk over to the side of the screen and talk about Charleston Chew. You know, Charleston Chews yeah. for or thirty seconds, and then that? walk back over to the live broadcast. Terrible milk. What, what the hell is that drink? Uh, Ovaltine. Yes, thank Ovaltine. you. Ovaltine. <laughs> the terrible milk. Yeah. The, oh, uh, no. Yeah. That. Well, that's always what I. It's like powdered milk or yeah, something it's like, like that. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. It's like a malty. Yeah. The off-brand Nesquik, mm. basically. Oh, Nesquik. They'd be like, mm, Ovaltine makes your teeth dry out. Ugh. <laughs> that was their Does slogan. It? <laughs> it's just what makes I, your teeth. I dry wish. Out. I wish that was their like slogan. Ovaltine, the terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the terrible. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> All right, we'll stick with that. You know, when we take our break, if we actually we we don't need to go to it. We'll do our interstitial with that. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you to our sponsor, Ovaltine, the terrible milk. milk. <laughs> Mom, this milk tastes too good. <laughs> That's because you brushed your teeth with quick with uh, maple syrup this morning, you little bastard. <laughs> that took a turn. Yeah, it went south real quick. <laughs> no, it didn't. Shut up. All right. Well, whose mom are you portraying? That's my mom. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is that what she sounds like? She smokes like two packs a day. What? Everyone's mom isn't just like belligerent all the time. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> my mom is a good Christian woman. Ask her what Xmas is. No. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Get her on the phone right now. <laughs> my mom is a snake handler, so that might be a thing. Elise, what does the X in Xmas stand for? No, we all talked about it. <laughs> Nobody, I gave an, a legit answer, but like these two, or no, I buy it. Dave doesn't believe it. No, me. I don't get it. I don't think that's it. I want to hear your version. It's Christ on the cross. Okay. I mean, I figured it was like a sideways cross. That's yeah. Thank you. Fuck sense. you, Dave. You know what? Start talking about the first piece of the anthology. I'm looking this up. You're not the boss Wait, of me. I am the boss of you. You are he not. Doesn't know. He doesn't he know. He just has Can no I get idea. A beer from you? Yes, sure. <laughs> uh, a great thing to have on record there. Just like, yes, you can have a beer for me. No, you can't have any beer. However, you can't have a glass of wine. You can have oh, that Christ might not be a good idea. Love. Yeah, I know, that's why I want you to have one. <laughs> get some wine. Get some wine. Wine, wine, wine. Keep him flying. Uh, Keep talking. We just shut up for the entire time that Dave is gone. <laughs> okay, shh, shh, shh. Wait, who does the editing? Editing is it you? Yeah. Oh well, I feel like we're fucking you. I was hoping we'd fucking Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk again. <laughs> All right. So they are in the Planet Express building, and they're preparing for Santa's visit, which amounts to him throwing non-ignitable bottles of eggnog at people has and like a bit of it about like eggnog is not good does anyone's no. family still use eggnog as like a traditional christmas beverage i mean i think it's a thing but it's never been a thing for me yeah we never family. did eggnog okay i but i do love milk like i'll drink a glass of cold milk and I'll love it. I mean, that, yeah, that's fair, but yeah, but I don't, I don't want like booze in it if I'm like doing like I want to drink booze or so I want to. So you don't drink... like a white Russian? I love white Russian. Not really, no. Love them. Uh, I once, well, no, it's not, it's not milk, milk. I invented a drink. 
Uh, <laughs> you in invented a drink. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Terminator, and it's a uh, vanilla almond milk, hazelnut syrup, uh, vodka, and creme de cacao, and it's awesome. But I don't. I've never made it with real milk. I probably wouldn't. So what have you been making with instead of milk? Almond milk. Yeah. Vanilla almond milk. You never had almond milk before? You're, it's weird. It's silty. You're, yeah, no, almond milk. You're milk's... missing out on that calcium. Eh. Yeah. You can get calcium from other things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like what? Eating other bones? I chew on a dentabone. bone. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just gnaw on a skeleton every now and then, and it, it works. Uh, no, I'm pretty I think... sure they have orange juice that has calcium in it. Yeah, I get my I get my calcium orange juice. I stir a heaping spoonful of Ovaltine in. Yeah, and then he throws some vodka. And I'm good to go. I never yeah. need to drink another glass of milk. It's a good brunch thing. Orange Ovaltine. <laughs> oh, nice. That's one of the worst things I can think of. Cram it, Virginia. <laughs> it's my next note. Yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> Uh, but we also have a bit about when they go to the the seed vault and there's the the Canadian guard. I'm assuming he's Canadian. Well, they're in Norway. Sounds Canadian though. Yeah, but he he is definitely Canadian. He has the same I think cadence of like how any American envisions a northern European country's pers. Uh, military personnel to like act in a situation where you're just like, oh okay, yeah. No, well, what does Bender say to him? He goes, "Hey, listen here, politey or something like something to that." Yeah. <laughs> like immediately, the first thing I thought was they're referencing a Canadian person. <laughs> yeah, it felt a little weird. I expected for anything like a Swedish chef kind of accent. <laughs> yeah, it, it would have been like bumbling. But he's also <laughs> the most <laughs> hapless guard that's ever like <laughs> been. Just like, could there be a uh, a possibility of cross contamination? Sure. No. no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because there is directly like ten feet away from the seed vault, there's the germ vault. Uh, those are, two, as far as I know, those are actual things too. They have um, a vault with seeds, the and seed they. I think it's real, and it looks exactly like that, and it's in Norway. Yeah. Like yeah. it looks awesome. Um. And yeah, I'm sure I'm sure not a germ lab next to it, but not they next do, to like, it. But they maintain hold on samples to... of even eradicated diseases. Yeah, like there like... are samples of smallpox in the U.S. Yeah. and Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is like super encouraging. Yeah, right now. doesn't that doesn't <laughs> that make you feel a little like mm, uh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> like it's like yes, we can correct Jenny McCarthy. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> to the germ vault. <laughs> <laughs> the Norwegians again save the day. <laughs> And this is why the Norwegians have it. <laughs> They're just like, hmm, now you can't do that. It's also why they have the highest uh, level of happiness amongst their citizens, because they know that they could just murder the entire world and still succeed. Like, they're fine with it. They could take everyone else out. I thought it was Switzerland. Yeah, I was going to say, Switzerland, who is, like, completely neutral, does not give a fuck about anything <laughs> that's going on. They're yeah. just like, hmm, we don't care. We're happy here. We have health care. People get paid a good amount of money. You well, can smoke I, weed here if you want to. I had met a, <laughs> a, a Swiss guy when I was in New Orleans. He was staying at the same hostel that I I was in. And, it, like, we had just, uh, like, one night we both just, like, gotten drunk and, like, talking about shit. And he, he was, like, telling me all these, like, stories about how, like, he was in, um the Swiss army that it's like um, compulsory service that like every Swiss huh. citizen has oh, to like, like uh, be in the army at a certain point every Swiss citizen has to like know how to like handle a firearm and like all this shit and I was just like yeah and there was uh, I, I was drunk and I just brought this up and I was just like yeah so it's, it's like how all of like the bridges are like wired with explosives and he just gave me this look just like what? It's like, yeah, like all of the like Swiss bridges because it was during World War Two, they may, remained neutral, but 
your country had like planned for like being invaded from like either side so they rigged all the bridges into Switzerland with demolitions to prevent like invaders and I will never forget with the most stone-faced look that I have ever gotten from another human being he just said those have all been removed now <laughs> Uh, I can only imagine your drunken conversation with this man. <laughs> but only you would bring up something like, yeah, like the explosives on your bridge. <laughs> uh, granted, it was not a probably a good thing for me to bring up, but fucking Google it. That happened. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. Swiss Miss. That's another good milk additive. <laughs> yes, it is. But you've got a. Uh, stop it and stir the milk every, like, minute if you're, like, microwaving it. Oh, I, I heat the milk first and then put it in. Yeah, no, me too, but if you're, like, microwaving it, you've got to, like, stir it so it doesn't get that film on the top. Yeah. You know how it says, like, you can use water or milk? Ugh. Is anybody using water? Using, drinking chocolate water? Yoohoo is kind of chocolate water. There's no mil milk in Yoohoo. But you who's fucking good. Nice yeah, you who about, rules. Like, <laughs> yeah, I love you who. Hot chocolate. Mix do you remember at this point? Do you remember when they had like flavored you who's? They had like a banana one. Yeah, yeah, the, one. Uh, yeah. The strawberry one uh, was pretty banana. good. Yeah. They were awesome. Yeah. yeah. They still sell the strawberry one. Okay. There was a chocolate yeah. banana. Oh man. All right. What's your guys' favorite flavored chocolate drink? Go. I don't drink milk. Okay, well you could drink you who. You're a good you who candidate. I don't drink Yoohoo either. That shit's disgusting. I'm a fan of the Hershey's uh, milkshake, uh, personally. Hmm. Hmm. All right. I like a good old glass of hot milk with some Nestle Quick stirred around in the bottom, like too much, so that when you I stir fudge. it, so when you stir it, there's still some sediment in the bottom. So when you drink it and you're done, you can still scoop it up and have a good. Like spoonful of chocolate Don't goodness. Do that. You're the one who egged this on. Good snack. <laughs> We've lost the goddamn thread. This bit is going nowhere. It's not a bit. It's this is a bit. important just, piece of. Yeah, I'm just talking about what debate for like. posterity. So why are we doing it? Because he wants to. All right. <laughs> Say again. Speak up. Marburgers. The man brings up Marburgers chocolate milk, which I have not. No. Yeah, can't you get that at like a Turkey Hill or something? No, it's Western PA thing. I don't know if you ever tried it. Oh, well, I know I've seen it. I don't know that the, I've had it. The man on the street has once again brought in a valid point. Have you ever had uh, <laughs> True Moo? True Moo. Oh, okay. See a well, man on the street? See a man. Yeah. True Moo. True Moo? No. Yeah, it's apparently like. Uh, the person is originally from PA who made it, but when I lived in Austin, she lived next to me, and now it's owned by Swiss. Oh. Uh, it's like an all-organic... I've seen that. Yeah. How did we get to hear from the seed vault? I have no idea. Swiss. I Sw it was my fault. I brought okay. a Swiss mess. It was the <laughs> goddamn Norwegians every time. Fucking Norwegians. Wait, the Swiss? <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. No, now we're completely off topic. There was a Swiss. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a Swiss bridges. Um, James, get us back on topic. You have notes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dick Cheney's head. Ah, uh, yes, which I do think is one of the funniest moments in this because well, it makes complete sense. Very telling political moment because this right. is 2010, maybe early 2011 when this comes out. Um, but this is right. Shortly after the end Years of after. the Bush administration, and of course Dick Cheney is the president. Okay, I hate to say this, but I love Dick Cheney for one reason, that he is unabashedly evil. He it's does true. not fucking, doesn't care. Does Why not do you even care. love him for that, though? Yeah, I don't think you have to love it, but I mean, well, I'm guy saying knows it who he is. Kind of yeah, like, I mean, you can acknowledge it, but don't. No, I'm saying it because really, what kind of person ever is like that? He just does not care that anyone knows that he did all this terrible shit. Do you remember when he shot a guy in the face? Yeah, exactly. 
Hey, my day got no way. <laughs> He's trying to marry my daughter. I meant to do that too. <laughs> I've had six fucking heart attacks. <laughs> no one's gonna kill me except for me. <laughs> uh, the last time I had a heart attack, I murdered a boy. <laughs> Oh my god. He lived next door, delivered the paper every day, but I wanted his heart. Dick Cheney sounds so much like your mom. It's uncanny. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's very close. Uh, James, do you have something to tell <laughs> No, but James's mom wants to tell you. I don't sound anything like Dick Cheney. <laughs> I voted for Obama twice. <laughs> uh. So we see Dick Cheney's head, and he says to... <laughs> That's like a great way to start a sentence. <laughs> yeah. We see Dick Cheney's head, and he uh, informs the president, Nixon, also an, another evil man, not quite as open about his evilness. <sighs> is this actually, is this the first time that we've seen Cheney with Nixon? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I so. Like James said, this is like right at the end of an era, so... Yeah, okay. I, you know, it's a little poke at uh, you know i'm surprised we didn't see president bush's head in there as well like just in the background like oh, i don't know if that's a good idea dude <laughs> well i'm sure just going by their um uh production schedule like they probably wouldn't have had time to put this into effect during the like they wouldn't have had like the the wherewithal are known necessarily when they were writing this They're just like oh it's gonna be joe biden so we've got to just like Put Joey B in a jar and just like uh, Nixon. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do Joey that. B. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We well, call him Uncle Joe. So that's his. That's his name, right? Yeah. Uncle Joe. He's uh, you know, was the vice president and is just. Uh, <laughs> and the memes keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't stopped. <laughs> well, he's just a weird, gropey grandpa. I mean, constantly whispering into the ear of. Into the ear of underage girls. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Jeez. I love the man, but yes, there's many videos of him whispering into but underage girls. Do you girls. really think it's that? He's probably him just like saying something very innocent. That's like, just the demographic just... <laughs> that gets his jokes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. <laughs> oh, he's hey. Hey. Malia. Have you seen Lil Cats yet? <laughs> <laughs> she said, she something like very innocent. <laughs> it's a great show. <laughs> also, your dad should lower taxes. <laughs> Tell him that. Tell him. Tell him to let me throw a football at Trump's face. <laughs> we have a very pervy image of Joe Biden going on now. But it's, it's pervy innocent. Almost a little bit. Hey. He doesn't realize he's being pervy. Do you want to see my knuckle tattoos? <laughs> hey, we all know that he rides the uh, train in Philadelphia, right? No. You think, well, he does. Okay. To and from work every day. Right. Joe Biden. Yes. Oh, shit. Mm. But you think he's not groping someone here and there? Oh, don't try to sully his name, yeah, man. I, I think he's not. I, if anything, he's <laughs> being groped. Yeah. I feel like He's people come up to him and are just like yep. putting their arms around him and shit. And he's like, I have no idea what's going on. Oh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I don't mean to besmirch his name. I would vote for him in a fucking heartbeat. But... Oh, yeah. Over anyone that they would put forth at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, the if... orange buffoon. I tried to bring him up. You guys didn't want to go into that one. For all of our listeners outside of the United States, we should just make clear, our political system is... Fucked. We're fucked. Well, I would <laughs> say it is a uh, dumpster fire inside of a dumpster fire factory. Okay, so dumpster fire was a coined term at the time when our president was elected, so I'm glad you used it twice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're just like, if we're just like a country that manufactures dumpster fires, we have a dumpster it's fire running. It's our biggest export. <laughs> it's our best export. Yeah. 
No, you should see. China is clamoring for our dumpster fires right now. <laughs> they need something to smoke out uh, the rest of the pollution. Inhabitable uh, tenements right now. <laughs> it's, we've gotten way the fuck off track. Yes, we have. Uh, Do you guys have any comments about the first sketch in this show specifically? Uh, I well, rolling with the political theme that we seem to have gone on. Uh, when they grow back all the trees, and Fry says, "Earth is just as it was before the white man came." <laughs> That's not inaccurate. <laughs> no, 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 no. Of course, the trees throw pine cones that explode. Anyone catch that? Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know what the trees on the West Shore do, but that's what my trees do. No, the trees in Harrisburg smell like cum. Uh-huh. Get ready for that. <laughs> that is the true. Lindens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're right on the cusp of cum season. <laughs> yeah, the cum trees, which I was unaware of until like a year or two ago. It's like, what the hell is that smell? Uh, the trees are about to ejaculate. <laughs> Is everybody else who's lived in Harrisburg, you guys are all aware that was a thing? Yeah. Yeah. And how did you come to this conclusion? Uh, ah, I didn't mean that. I didn't do that on purpose. There's a uh, <laughs> sketch from the Michelin Web look about this very subject. Uh, and so I was familiar with the sketch, and then I I'm glad you referenced that instantly <laughs> when I what the trees were when I smelled them. <laughs> all right. So if you're familiar with that show, or that show, then you're familiar with the uh, Sir Digby Chicken Caesar. Uh-huh. <laughs> you guys don't know what we're talking about. No, not at all. You're not but cool. you need no. to. Yeah, you need to be aware. It's I tried to tell Elise about it. What was Wait, it? What's it called? It's a sketch that Mitchell show. and Webb look. Yeah. Oh, that British bullshit. It's uh, the people from Peep Show. Yep. Which is one I of my favorite sitcoms of all time. Uh, uh no that I I'm not saying it's a bad show but it made me feel terribly uncomfortable. Yeah oh yeah every fucking second of it is uh, and there's an awkwardness for sure. If you guys want to feel really uncomfortable, watch Peep Show. But it's great. <laughs> it is great. Dave, have you watched the Elegant Gentleman's Guide to? Night I want Flight? to. Yeah, I do. Okay. I haven't watched it yet. We've been watching it recently just because we're, like, watching sketch shows. And, well, at least I'd seen it before. I never had, but it's amazing. Well, I was trying to tell her that you two should watch that Mitchell and Webb look. You'll probably never take any advice from you ever. Okay. Thanks. Anyways. Well, I was right about Love. It is a terrible show. It's my favorite show of all time. You you still hate it, though. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you hate it. Why we're not doing this? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm stopping it now. We've been ha- you this two have like been an episode. you two have been having the same goddamn argument about this for two and a half years. Two years. Did you watch season three? Not the whole season. Yeah. Did you see the? No, episode? <laughs> no, no. It's done. Did you see the episode? About I'll unplug Birdie? your microphone. About Birdie. No, I recently just watched... Okay, all right, all right. Just let me finish, and then we'll move on. I watched the episode where they went to the wedding, which I thought was actually pretty good. Elise made a face. <laughs> all right, we're done. So, the x sketch. Anything else on that? No. This is a garbage episode. Move on. I mean, yeah. I thought, like, for, like, for the first sketch, I thought, like, oh, the concept is good. This is funny. Uh, and then they did it two more times with slightly different <laughs> parameters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they kept pushing different things. And even with the Xmas, I don't know why they had to do, like, a Christmas or a holiday anthology. Like, just because it was the holiday spectacular, they could have just... I'm sure it was probably something contractually that they had to when they shifted to Comedy Central. Like, we need you guys to do just, like, a Christmas episode or, like, a holiday episode. Just do, like, something that we could put out in fucking December. But also, that like, that first sketch could have been a whole episode. They could have expanded that and, like, padded it out. But they decided to do the same thing three times, and they just get stuck on that. That I don't know if they felt like they needed to be inclusive, but at the same time, it wasn't necessarily, like accurate or sensitive portrayals of anyone else's traditions. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't even really do... Um, they didn't really do that for anything, which is 
I guess, in a way, good, because I don't necessarily know that I want um, Futurama to present Kwanzaa to me yeah, in, some, in some meaningful way. But when they like go to Robonica, and it's... Uh, what, what did I write down? Um, oh, strippers with five-speed groins. <laughs> it, Which seemed funny as I wrote it down, and I'm sure as they wrote this episode, they thought the same thing. Uh, did we talk about who wrote? Yeah, several writers for this, I'm assuming. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was their staff, basically. I'm sure it's split off to one person, but it's very clearly just, like, everyone in the room just like, and what do we, we're doing the same story three times? Okay, so, gotta go find something, 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 petroleum. There you go. Yeah. What is it with uh, Hanukkah? has something to do with oil lasting? Okay, we got it. Like, I'm sorry, but uh, this was the. We don't really need to go over the plot because, as as Justin brought up, it's like it's basically the same sketch three times in a row, where it's they're tasked with finding something, and this one it's petroleum for uh, stripper bots to wrestle in. There are. Different, like, main characters, I guess, in each series or whatever. I mean, <clears throat> this one, I don't know. I definitely thought that the second um, part of the episode, like the second uh, skit or whatever, I like the second one better than the first, at least, with, like, I don't know, just Bender being a lunatic and they even acknowledge. Wa- wanting to watch robots wrestling like that was kind of like the what what started the episode yeah and like it play that one at least or like plays scene. into bender's character like the kwanzaa yeah. episode has nothing to do with hermes character really yeah and like yeah, because they never mentioned that he celebrates kwanzaa right. ever like, like it, i would have loved to the for them to have like made up a holiday that zoidberg celebrates to explain <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That would have been yeah, yeah. yeah. That would have been a lot more funny. Like, well, and also Hermes is Jamaican, and as Amy actually points out in the episode, uh, Kwanzaa was started in the United States in 1966, yeah. and is based off of um, an old African uh, seasonal holiday. But you know what it was? It's and I hate to say it's because he's also black. Yeah, so obviously. yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't going to just, like, throw that hey, one of us right has to it. be right to the point about it, so... Uh, well, I mean, we are four white men talking about this, so I, I am aware, and it's not a... It, I'm just pointing out the show's little foibles. Like, it, it, they had to have something. And we've seen Kwanzaa Bot in there before. Like, do we have a Jewish character that they could have gone to Hanukkah Zombie for? Randy. Why would they bring? Why would they bring Randy? Nobody likes Randy. You yeah. shouldn't be talking to Randy. You think no, but Randy's don't talk Jewish. to Randy. Randy's Jewish. Don't you talk to Randy? You're saying don't talk to the Jews? Wow, David. <laughs> I did not. Wow. You're the one who said that. Wow. Way, way too far. You stepped over the line there. Let me guess. You believe that they should be in inter- in internment camps, David? No. That's what you just said. I just you said don't talk to Randy. Basically just built an oven. You're just gonna keep going with this, aren't you? For as long as it's gonna be funny. Why do you have to it be It stopped ki- being funny like right now. Why do you have to be a killer of bits constantly, regardless of whether or not they're funny? <laughs> that was not a good bit. <laughs> It wasn't a good bit at all. Just let us get into it and it was... dig our own graves. Much like you want yeah. the Jews to do. Peanut gallery. Was that a funny bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the first part. No comment. No. Just like the conscientious objectors <laughs> who didn't want to weigh in. So she's a Swede. <laughs> she's, uh, well, I don't know a Swede, but definitely that. Irish. I'm a Swede. Right. Ooh. Terrible job. Ah. Yeah, they were. Yeah. <laughs> Way to stay out of things, Ireland. <laughs> Did it for good reason, as far as I know. 
No! It was a world war! Yeah, everyone keeps saying that. Like, that was a thing. <laughs> New Zealand was there. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand? New Zealand, the Anzac was there. You, Ireland couldn't represent? Fuck no. Too busy getting drunk and growing potatoes. There's what? There's a what on? I'm not dressed. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> We're not thoroughly hammered. <laughs> Can't do it. Nah, fuck your red. <laughs> the war starts before noon. Count me out. It's, uh, what are we I doing? I haven't had my aspirin yet. <laughs> Wait, did they invent aspirin yet? <laughs> oh, yeah. Aspirin is around. Uh, I have one note that just says Al Gore. And I think we should bring him up. We keep seeing Al Gore throughout this. His daughter wrote for the show for a time. <coughs> Kristen, Kristen Gore wrote uh, at least one episode. Yeah, which we, yeah, we Interesting. did talk about, I think, boy, what episode was that? Uh, I would have to go way back to, to find it. But, yeah, don't, um, yeah, we'll put it in the little Yeah, Kristen Gore was a staff writer for the... Um, for, the Futurama writers' room for a, a while, at least a few years. I just think it's great that Al Gore wants to be on the show and wants to make fun of himself. I'm just glad that Al Gore is still doing things. Like we see now, like uh, I mean, Jimmy Carter went back to the peanut farm. Like George W. Bush kind of disappeared, started painting. Yes. I yeah. guess he's a famous artist now. Yeah, I'm a painter now. Al Gore is still out there, like trying he's to still being save Al Gore. the world. Yeah. And you're just like, and this is what happens when you put trash in the ocean. Just like, oh, Al, you're right, but we're depressed. What was his second movie uh, documentary called? Oh, it was called... I Was Right, Suck It, Bitches. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say it now, Gore's voice. I was right. Suck it, bitches. <laughs> Subheader, I fucking told you. <laughs> now there's an orange guy running the country. <laughs> we elected a reality TV substar who is uh, dumber than everyone. He's dumber than everyone. <laughs> everyone. Shut up, Al. We know. <laughs> if you guys haven't realized this yet, Donald Trump is very dumb. Very. It's like it's kind of fun to watch sometimes. It like, it's it like would reality be as it goes if down like flames. if like the fate of our lives weren't hanging in the balance. It would be very yeah. funny. But Look. you just have to like not think about that too much. Or you just couldn't live. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Until you accept that he has, he very clearly has like a personality disorder, and then it's basically just laughing at like a mentally ill person trying to run the most intricate machine that has ever been designed. But I mean, <clears throat> he's a very good businessman. Yeah, as yeah, is evidenced <laughs> by his, uh, what, 14 bankruptcies? How many are up to now? 3,500 yeah. people have tried to sue him. Uh, I mean, he, okay, with regards to his bankruptcies, yes, he has gone bankrupt 14 times, potentially, but that's because he's a good businessman. He has, he has leveraged yeah. <laughs> the system against itself so that he doesn't have to pay anymore. That means he's smart. What did you say? Hey, that 3,500 people have tried to sue him. Yes. Well, that's probably because he is such a smart guy, and they're mad that he didn't, like, you know, just – Bend to their whim. Guess what? James. You're not going to get what you need out of a great businessman every day of your life. James, should I let this bit keep going? So what I think we should do is let him bankrupt the country, okay. and then yeah. we just start sure. a new country. So, Justin. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about the next skit? Overall, what are we on? Where are we on? We're on the we Robonica. On? Robonica? Just yeah. refusing to go with that at all. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this I mean, is gonna keep happening. It was fine. <laughs> I think that we should call the new country Robom Robo America. Let's all get Robo Oklahoma. Let's all Ooh. get um, implants. We Ro can all become robots. R Robotswana. Robotswana. There it good. is. Robotawa. Now you're joining in. Is that what's going <laughs> yeah. on? Yeah, you brought puns into it. Okay. <laughs> I'm right. in. 
I said a one pun earlier, and I didn't uh, even mean to. Quabot. Mmm. <laughs> Quabot. South Bafrica. <laughs> Botswana. <laughs> uh, there it is. <laughs> we've circled. We've come full circle. I don't really have anything. That, there's not a lot in, like, the second, um, the Robonica skit that is terribly funny. I guess, like, in context, it kind of makes sense, but ultimately it's the same, like Justin said, it's the same sketch retread again. Mm-hmm. Cyborgon. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. <laughs> we we <Nicely> found it. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. For, for anyone who would like to join us, we'll be founding Cyborgon in uh, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and what is left of Massachusetts, <laughs> splitting off from the rest of the country. Sounds good. I like it. With its capital city, USB Portland. Oh! Wow. (laughs) Nailed it! (laughs) Yeah, I don't have anything funny about the second bit except Al Gore when he just shows up and just like, I'll have one one unit of free solar power. That was the funniest joke in the episode. It really was. He's like, um, ten (laughs) dollars? I guess. (laughs) Yeah, it just stands to the side and lets the, the sun come into the window, which Al Gore didn't even need to be inside for that. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. Well, he had to have his little jab at the uh, why there's no more petroleum thing going on. So, do you need to get by? <laughs> Keep going. Uh, yeah, well, you're right. That, there really wasn't all that much funny. And then that kind of leads us into the next skit, which is what we were talking about earlier with Kwanzaa. And they get into that immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, does anybody know anything about Kwanzaa? Not particularly. I remember, like, learning about it in school, and I... It's honestly... like an amalgam of a bunch of different... Amalgam? Yeah, a mixture. That's a good word. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I try sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, of d- different uh, religious holidays, or just holidays in general. Of course, Christmas is also, like, thrown together from pagan holidays. Yeah, and but I mean, I think specifically when you talk about, like, the African-American experience, you don't necessarily have a single shared heritage that goes back hundreds of, or thousands of years. Um, you know, because people were brought here against their will, yes. separated from families, families mixed and intermingled and spread out against their will, and so, you know, people can't necessarily trace the heritage just right back to like, oh, yeah, this point we're in from time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this country, and like this is what our ancestors believed, and so yeah, when you come to the point where Kwanzaa comes about, I think it's just about a way of including as many people as possible who aren't feeling represented. And as it was mentioned, it was started in, like, 1966, so trying to pull the people together. And I think that's the main, excuse me, theme of this skit as well, because we do see, like, a, there's a very overarching theme about bringing the the bees together. uh, I think the main point of this is they have to collect, what is it? Beeswax. Beeswax. To light the candles. Which just took me back to the episode where they're, you know, going through the the honeycomb. Honeycomb big? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah, yeah, small. yeah. No, no, no. Where Fry gets stabbed by the bee. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, um, what is it? The sting. Is yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh... I like that in there, the the scene, though, where they're all around the, the table that Zoidberg is constantly getting fucked with. Oh, yeah. But he has some good lines in this one, too. Yeah. Well, kind of. He's only really in... The last... Yeah, I mean, he's in the, the Xmas bit, and I think he's in the rope. 
the Robonica bit, but he only really has lines, like good lines in like the last one. Yeah. He's like, how about I just lie down? <laughs> <laughs> lay down a beat, Zoidberg. <laughs> but it's just like he's constantly getting fucked with when they're just like, they're throwing things around and like hits him. Or when, for some reason, we don't see this, uh, uh, Barbados Slim hits on Zoidberg. <laughs> Which is a whole other level of, like, cross-species sexuality that we haven't even gotten into yet. He says something about his sexual proclivity. Yeah. Like, in the song. Oh, by mm-hmm. the way, does anyone know the voice of Kwanzaabot? It's L.O. Cool J, I think. Oh. It's, no, it's Coolio. Coolio, oh. excuse me. Oh. Yes. Which is just kind It'd be of hilarious if it was L.O. Cool J. <laughs> I was trying to figure that out as we were Cool watching. isn't the name. You knew that. Yeah. It's pretty cool with a K. <laughs> uh, you guys also had a thing with something that Hermes says to La Barbara. Oh yeah, you gotta uh, rewind it and write it down. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna fuck this up. Um, fast, say it fast. But it's when, it's it's when Hermes and La Barbara are talking about the uh, the candelabra and how they need it to be made. Uh, the candles to be made of beeswax, and La Barbara tasks Hermes with going out to like find beeswax candles, and his response. I'm sorry about this in advance. Sweet candelabra of La Habra La Barbara. <laughs> you gotta say it faster. <laughs> All kudos to Phil Lamar mm-hmm. on being able to deliver that line because that is fucking insane. <laughs> That's just like, I mean, I will just like say that is like a good voice actor doing his job with let's, that. Let's go around the table and each try to say it as fast as we can once. Oh, oh god, okay. Sweet candelabra of La Habra La Barbara. 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 <laughs> Not fast at all. <laughs> no. Beautiful. Did we look up what La Habra was? Yes, we did. We had two different uh, finds. We had mine, which was a city in California, apparently, La Habra. But then also in Spanish, it means... uh, Where where is this? Something like that. No, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That makes sense, though. It's like, where am I going to find a fucking candelabra made of beeswax right now? Uh, On the eve of Kwanzaa. It makes more sense than Xmas, I guess, right? Yeah, a night that everyone knows and clearly gets off work for. <laughs> a uh, cross on its side. <laughs> a, a cross on its side is just uh, the devil. Uh, <laughs> gotta angle it. Di- it's, it's turned diagonally. Yeah. 45, 45 degrees. Yep. Yeah. Well, all right. Fucking well, carpenter. Even <laughs> with the. <laughs> Even with this skit, like, even Kwanzaabot is not fully, like, he's just kind of like, ah, I'm bored with this. Like, doesn't even want to... Yeah, no, he's bored, and he just fucking leaves. <laughs> and I like that, um... The way that... Like, the way that they wrap this skit up, and I, it it makes sense as far as, like, them trying to wrap up the episode in the way that they're repeating themselves with this, where it's just like, they just go and fucking talk to space bees. <laughs> Why the fuck not? Yeah. They already raided the seed vault and drilled into the Earth's core. Let's just, for Kwanzaa, let's just go talk to some goddamn space bees. Well, in this too, the queen bee has a voice. Does anyone know who does the voice of the queen bee? I was going to guess Tress McNeil. Okay. Uh, actually makes sense, yeah. But we don't get a lot of uh, Bender doing his buzz buzz thing. I would say it's whoever does the voice of La Barbara also does the Queen Space Bee. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah. yeah. Well, this brings in that well, what uh, Justin and I were kind of going over is the, the community, like getting people to be together. Be- another be- terrible... Uh, yeah, no, I didn't try to do yourself. that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> But there really, there wasn't too much that was funny about this skit either. 
Like, not really. None of these are particularly funny. It's just like there's some there's some decent bits in them. Like um like when they go to the um the beeswax farm and Petunia is running it. Oh, no, that was actually r really funny. The honey yeah. thing. Sure you don't need some honey. Oh, that was gross. Yeah, but it was funny. <laughs> it really – I heard you laughing. Yeah, I laughed. Yeah, exactly. It's so weird. Yeah, none of these are especially funny, like, on their own, but there are, like, se like segments or just, like, uh, back and forth in them that are, like – that stand out to me. Like, the when, you know, Petunia is running the beeswax farm and she's just like, yep, yep. Live fast, die young, and leave a beautiful corpse. That's what I say. <laughs> Bender's just like, you should say something else. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a great... Yeah. That's like a Henny Youngman joke. Yeah, there's funny lines, but I think, like, normally what I like most about Futurama and what I think they do best is really high concept. <coughs> like, yeah. really out there stuff. And this episode just felt, like, pretty conservative, concept-wise. It, it did. It felt like it... It, it dragged a bit. Uh, I still think, like, this is one that they were sort of, like, obligated to do, of just, like, we need a fucking holiday episode to put out there, you guys. But I think that they would have been better off just, like, rolling with one of the three I ideas agree. and making, making an episode of it. Because they have done... Uh, holiday episodes that have been just fine in the because past. Because you could but... tie it in. I mean, no matter what story you go to, you could tie in the other holidays. Bender can go on about Robotica through the sure, entire episode, sure. and yeah. he would. Mm -hmm. But I, I felt like it didn't need to be its own thing. They could have combined every little thing. Like, let's save the holidays. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't have to be, like, three separate... It could have just been, like, one massive epic adventure. Like... In 30 minutes, which they could have pulled right, off. Right, because you have that, like, in every segment, you have that three minutes of setup. Yeah. That's kind of just the same. Yeah, and like... it like, feels like wasted time. So which of these... Because... I think I got... Like, they wanted to... Or they... Whether they wanted to or had to do, like, a holiday episode is... I'm, uh, not important, but... I think they like they made this in like an effort to be multicultural. Yeah. Which yeah. is good, but it also diffused the episode to the point where none of the uh, singular bits actually landed on anything. So if you were to say if if they were to do any one of these three segments as a full episode for like a like a holiday thing, which one do you think would have like the most like potential, or do you, would you want to see the most like drawn out? Well, I would, despite the fact that I think it might have been the weakest um, part of the episode, I would want to see more about the uh, the seed vault. I feel like they could run with that. Pretty, okay. Yeah, pretty well. When they introduced that, like the concept of viruses <laughs> yeah, yeah, breeding yeah, with that was seeds, that was like funny. that's yeah. a good setup. That, that could easily that's be a good a setup. Whole episode. Yeah. yeah, that could have been its own episode, not even a holiday thing. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't even yeah. need to be. Yeah, exactly. Thing. You're right. Like, yeah. uh, for this particularly, like just in holiday, like I think the beginning of these little skits kind of starts out strong. And then it goes downhill from there. So I feel like that's what happened. They were like, oh, writer's room, what were we thinking? We should have combined all three of these. Fuck, now we have three separate. Why did they make this the season finale? James already said it. It, it was contractual. Like, oh, sure. So I noticed that this was only a 13-episode season. Yeah. Was this the year of the writer's strike? Oh, this uh, was no. This was 2010, okay. maybe early 2011. Okay. Writer strike strike was what? 07, 08, or yeah, something. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Before that. Okay. Yeah. Because, but they did even reference like we'll be back next year. Yeah. Because they know like you know for a while a, a lot of series you hit this season where it just ends. Yeah. Um, but I guess if I had watched it. this in real time, like when it aired that day, 
I would have watched this episode and then seen that last line, like, oh, we'll be, we'll be back. I would have been like, well, great. I hope you did something better than you did this episode. Like, well, maybe, I, I'll, maybe I'll watch. I don't know. Uh, I did watch it in real time. Oh, really? Yeah. No, I, when these were coming out, I was super pumped that they brought Futurama back. Okay. So I remember watching – I kind of remember watching this episode and being, like, lackluster. Being like, all right, well – has Futurama hit its uh, its point where like have have they jumped the shark? Did they lose the magic? <laughs> yeah, like are we done? Like are they gonna cancel it after this? I hope this is not the last episode because I want to see better than this. Hey, could uh... the the you guys should just get semaphore flag? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That like is. guard shit. That would work probably better. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm very distracted. I'm like a cat watching. So I will say that I think that the best uh, bit from this episode was the the Kwanzaa um, series that they did. I would love to see that because we've already seen the Space Bees. We've already had that been established that that's part of this universe. I would love to see that they just like go back to the space bees to get beeswax for a Kwanzaa thing. Because the whole fucking wrap up for that is just like Hermes kind of gives a motivational speech and then the space crabs fall off of them. I realize that if someone had just like jumped to this point in the episode and listened to what I just said, it sounds like nonsense. <laughs> but like, That's like every episode we do. But, like, yeah, it, I feel like there you could build a whole story off of that and just, like, breaking it up into, like, these different things didn't help them at all. But I would love to see a full, like, just full episode about Kwanzaa and Herm how Hermes saves Kwanzaa. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Are we writing that now? <laughs> we could. Elise, take that note, please. <laughs> All right. What about you, Dave? No, like I, I already said, uh, I feel like they could have condensed all these stories into one, just a holiday, an actual holiday spectacular. Like, why separate it into three different stories when you could just, hey, let's save the holidays and made up some like random reason why they had to save, like Xmas, Robotica, and Kwanzaa. You know, they've done it before. I don't know why they had to split it up. Of course, you're right. They were trying to be uh, oh, what multicultural. Yeah, multicultural. Just feels like a lazy way to do it. Yeah. Did they feel like they need needed to make up for all the episodes where they were like super sexist and like <laughs> weird about? Well, they should. Okay, we've talked about this several times, and I'm not giving them an out, but when the show was originally made... Oh, so Dave just thinks it's <laughs> fine to be sexist if it's 2010. Suds, so what were you watching in, like, 22? Uh, 2002? 22? Oh, in Jesus 22. walking around the well, desert? <laughs> back in back in 22... <laughs> Um, I was I watch set him up for another bit. Back in 22, I was watching Shit. the uh, the story of Jesus himself. Uh, uh, there were a lot of rocks, lots of fish, and bread being okay. broken. What were you watching in 2002? No, seriously, that was... he's talking no, about no, 1922. No, no, that was that was the spin off. Thank you. It was. We were all enthralled by Lindbergh. Mm. <laughs> what would be? The most popular show in the year 22. What was your favorite song at the time? <laughs> oh, Electric was... Sports Bra. <laughs> <laughs> it was that guy that just like slaps a fish up against a tree. <laughs> Look what I'm oh, doing. Oh, are you talking about Gallagher? You're missing the sledge of Matic where he smashes the fish into the audience. You did this. You did it. <laughs> yes, good. Man. Now, uh,. How come the word road sounds the same as the... Stop. Just stop. Nobody likes Gallagher. Except for you. I do. My dad did. <laughs> and Gallagher, too. Even yeah, Gallagher, Gallagher doesn't too. like Gallagher. Yeah. 
He sold his trademark to does, his brother. Does he bill himself as Gallagher too? Yeah, I think so. He does, wow. actually. The original <laughs> Gallagher is just like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Gallagher like, 2, done. Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> He's like, I'm Great old name for a song. and <laughs> racist. You do my show. That's all he is. I Justin, se- uh, go ahead. I remember seeing Gallagher specials as a kid, but all I remember is the watermelon like smashing. I don't remember. I don't. Remember, he's racist. <laughs> I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he was interviewed by Mark Marin and uh, Marin oh, it's asked him some like recent. At, well, maybe like three years yeah. ago. But Marin asked him some like pretty hard hitting questions. Is this Gallagher one or two? Gallagher one. Okay. And Gallagher Original one's... recipe. Gallagher once stormed out of the hotel room Whoa. in the middle of the interview. Whoa. So you got to check that out. Yeah. You don't remember the big couch, do you? I remember the big couch. Yeah. I do, of course. And his hats. With the trampoline? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you jump around and pull shit out of the couch. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've been telling. I just hear been, sighs behind me. I've been That's telling all Elise about Gallagher for about the past twelve hours. Have you I, never seen any Gallagher at all? All right, you you're should, a better person. Than you I. should do a, a spinoff podcast, a short series on Gallagher specials. <laughs> yeah, Gallagher. So, oh, I don't see why not. Yeah, yeah I'd be into it. Like, yeah, I would yeah. be into it. <laughs> Shit, we have. We um, could talk about all the science. Like we, we have do here. microphones and internet access. We can do whatever the fuck we want. That, okay, you're bringing up. We, the, I we don't have, think there was any have, science in this episode. We have very a, little. We science. have more yeah. amenities given to us right now than what Gallagher wants brown people to have. Oh, Boom! Oh. Suck it, Gallagher. <laughs> it's never true. coming on our podcast. It's true. Fuck Gallagher. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and yet you still keep talking about him. He's hilarious. You ever seen those watermelons? <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> But you might think he's a one-trick pony, but no, he'll smash a cabbage. He'll, he'll smash, smash. A, he'll smash a tube of toothpaste. You openly admit anything. that Gallagher is a racist. You better get your tarp ready. Wait, 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 s- wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what about a pomegranate? Oh, he'll smash anything. But he'll smash that too. He'll smash anything but prejudice. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> Am I prejudiced? No, what, but what? But what about the word nest? Sounds like best. Oh, they're spelled correctly. However, what about? It sounds like beast. B e a s t. Beast. Best. Beast. I, I lost the. No, thread. you're done. I know you're I done. lost it. <laughs> Wait, None of us laughed, but it was funnier than Gallagher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, do you have a specific part best of this episode that you think would have been? Looks like they're doing beast. It right? Spelled like best. We're just going to talk about over the them. Asians. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I can't do it. No. We have to fucking do it. What do you, we have to get into slurries now. <laughs> let, let our guests tell us if there was a specific part of this that should have just been a whole. Uh, well, we should do the, the one I of think us. I think I agreed that it was the tree. I like the tree virus cross plot, and I think you can tie all the holidays into it. You can even tie all their quests into it. You know, they've done more. Okay. Okay. Do you want to go first for slurmy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice comment, but we don't care. What do you want to do? <laughs> James is done. I think. No, There's I'll uh, okay. I'll go last. Okay, well, then I'll go first. Uh, I give this... I'm not even going to explain why, because obviously we went over all the reasons why. This is a 1.5, maybe. Damn, Gina! (laughs) What does he say? Shut it, Veronica. (laughs) Cram it, Virginia! (laughs) Cram, Cram it, Virginia. By the way, who's Gina? I have no idea. I just thought I heard that at some point. I do know a Gina. Now I know a Gina. We may have recorded another Alpha episode no, today. No, I think we did a good job on this one, for the most part. <laughs> you might trim a little No! Fast You're not the one who has to review or edit the episode. No, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> no, I am not. By the way, have fun with shady voices, buddy. That was good. <laughs> that was a good episode. Yeah. Let's see how it goes every two weeks. From now on, <laughs> we'll be fine. How many slurms did you give this? 1.5. I'll go. I'll give this a 1.25. I think it's even worse than you thought. Uh, three disjointed stories. I mean, obviously, that's how they planned it, but 
for fuck's sake, like Justin said, they did three of the same stories just slightly differently. There was barely any funny things. I don't know. I didn't like it a whole lot. And especially if this is legitimately like the season seven, like season finale, bad, not good. Um, the, the terrible, no good, super bad episode of Futurama. Terrible, no good, bad episode of Futurama. Is no, we've given episodes one before. But is that like a book title, the thing I just said? Yeah, the Almost. terrible, no good, horrible day. You're the terrible, close. horrible, no good, very bad day. Yeah. Okay, that's how I feel about this episode. Thank you. <laughs> I did like, and I don't think we talked about it on the podcast, the one redeeming factor in the Seed Vault sketch, Hermes... Uh, weed, joke. weed joke, where he's like, "I brought some seeds of my own." Exactly. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Hermes, for redeeming this episode. <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> oh, thank you, Hermes. <laughs> well, I'm on. I'm on board. I hate. This is such a dumb episode. <laughs> it is. It's just not a. It's not a well put together like Futurama episode, and like we've talked about. Episodes that we've disliked before where it's just like – but it's contextually put together. It's just something like uh, uh, Bendless Love or um, – uh, what's, what's the one that Bender goes to the Olympics? Oh, uh, Bend Her. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's Which, the, yeah, it was terrible. The ones that are like contextually – bad but they're still well written in Which, a way i saw a picture from like some comic con recently with a person dressed up as the gender bender and i couldn't help but think like do they know what they're dressing up as like the now gender are you talking bender? about the episode where they do the wrestling where he dresses he's got like a tutu on i thought that was the same episode am nah, i wrong nah, that's a different oh, episode oh, okay. that's where he's like a wrestler and they change his persona into this like very effeminate character which even has its even in that episode it's kind of weird but for the wrestling uh thematics theatrics yeah. But even in talking about this episode, like, we weren't really able to come up with too many, like, funny bits that we liked throughout this thing. And I ruined was, them all. Well, it was, that's what it is. It was mostly, like, this episode being fairly dead and us trying to come up with funny things to say, which Dave prominently stepped on. Uh, Constantly. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't fucking defend this episode at all. It's just... it's. <laughs> It's flat. It's not funny. Um, a couple of good lines. Cram it, Virginia. And for for that only, I'm going to give this a point six slurmies. Oh, that is the lowest score. That today. might be the lowest ever. Yeah. I do not like Holy this. Holy shit. I agree with what everyone said. I thought it was a lazy execution um, of a potentially rich concept. Uh, and so I will give it five out of a possible 25. Uh-huh. I like how you did that. So if you need to do the math, it's a one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> It, he's the one that's bad at math. I was really trying to like do the math in my head. I was uh, like, I don't know. Should have let you play it out. Why were we allowed to go to college? Unfortunately, I got it real quick. Which <laughs> is terrible. Did you go to college? I did go to college. No, oh, did you graduate? Yeah, I have an associates. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> so the guy with the associates is the only one who knew how to do that math problem. I wrote James that math has problem. A, what do you mean? No, I knew how to yeah, do that math problem. He wrote oh, it down right away. He goes, it, one. <laughs> wait, am I the... So I'm the only one who yeah, didn't know no. how to do that math? Okay, fuck. But, God on the bright side, you're really good at picking up social cues as to 
how other people are thinking. Clearly. <laughs> eh. I'm just going to kill myself when we're done. <laughs> no, Let's wrap this yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank I you need for... to commit Harry Carey. Let's go. <laughs> thank you for listening. As always, you can follow me on Instagram at David Bonifair. Follow me on Twitter at Gorilla Karate. Um, follow me at the Morks on Bandcamp and Facebook. Oh, oh, husband. <laughs> yeah, we should take a minute to talk about the, the Morks. We could if you want. Go ahead. Yeah. We have a new band. It's called the Morks. We're on Bandcamp and Facebook, and we will have new tracks up fairly soon. But in the meantime, if you want to see photos of our practice space and random nonsense. There's photos on? The, there right. will be. We got content. Woo! Oh, Four. I'm a big fan of tent. Tent. <laughs> I call it cont. <laughs> <laughs> We're a very philosophical band. So anyhow, this band is me and James and Justin, and we just, we're going to blow your socks off with our musical stylings. Become a part of rock and roll history. I'd venture to say we would rock the socks off. Oh, Mm -hmm. yes, yes. With literal rocks. (laughs) I will throw rocks at your heads. It's kind of a gimmick. It's what we're known for. It's like a the Gallagher thing, bring a poncho. Yeah, except... (laughs) Bring a helmet when you come to our shows. <laughs> yeah, because I got a pile of rocks in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin, you uh, you uh, don't plug anything? Uh, FanicDesign.com. Buy art from me, I guess. <laughs> yes, buy Justin's art. It's outstanding. Um, I saw Justin walking out of the door next door one day, carrying like a really cool design. Thank you. <laughs> everyone should buy it. You know, yeah. like, it's like, everyone buy Justin's designs. Especially because he did, like, when you saw him, he did some really sick parkour, like, getting. Oh, out of the I door. had never before seen that quality of hardcore walking. Yeah. Like, it was insane. <laughs> he, yeah, I mean, jumped over the railing, kicked a bird to death, and then just went over a fire but hydrant. meanwhile he's oh, still yeah, man, I, meanwhile he's still holding the print perfectly in front of my face yeah well he's keeping it you know in frame and everything yeah yeah i mean i rarely leave my house without killing a bird with my feet exactly we gotta get rid of those <laughs> owls yeah they're I'm, everywhere i'm working on it i'm sick of this shit <laughs> all right uh goodbye everyone will be back s- later uh sorry Goodbye. Yeah, sorry for ruining your work day. (laughs) Android Arctica. Oh my god. (laughs) Off you go, apparently.